Hey everybody, in today's video I have this um, Mercedes um, C-Class, this is a 2004 and basically it's, um, it had the engine light on um, and uh, looking at the phone codes that come out of the computer, uh, we have a self-adaptation of, um, of mixture issue, so mixture is too rich and in this case we also have um, These are the fold cuts, but these two are not related to that. Um, this one here, it's showing me that the downstream O2 sensor, it's it's faulty. It's basically saying it's a short circuit to ground. Um, having had a look at the computer. This is for the upstream um, and if you look at the readings there it's showing uh, 1400 millivolts. Um, if you will look at the other one, I'm just gonna go back here. If we look at the downstream it's uh, it's fluctuating quite a bit, but um, basically what happens when you rev the engine, uh, that figure goes to zero, and it stays on zero. Um, at the moment, it's showing around 200. So I'm gonna I'm gonna change the downstream uh, sensor uh, based on these figures, and then uh, we'll have a look at. Uh, what we have after that okay so just a quick look here um, if I rev the engine Um, ideally, these sensors uh, usually fluctuate between 0 and 1 volt. This particular one is uh, fluctuating between uh, 0 and 0 0.3 because that's uh, millivolts there. So just have to move the just have to move the dot three um, three decimals back. Um, so we, what we really want to see this doing is uh, is reading between zero and and one or zero and eight hundred or nine hundred here or a bit higher. Um, so let's change the sensor and uh, let's have a look at these figures again. So this is the sensor here. That's the part number there. Um, we don't want to be changing these sensors just for the sake of changing them. They do uh, cost quite a lot, around two hundred and thirty pounds. Um, you could always try and get one, a second-hand one from eBay. Um, so to undo that sensor, we're gonna need a twenty-two mil um, spanner. And there is also, there would be a cover here, a plastic cover you need to remove. It's just held in by some 8mm screws. And the downstream sensor is this one here, after the cut. Um, so I already cracked this open. Um, but just a little tip, I applied a lot of uh, WD-40 here before cracking it open and because sometimes what's happened to me in the past is that the thread got damaged on the actual exhaust and then it was a pain in the in the backside trying to get get it to fit back in um, the sensor just uh, literally unplugs here 
unplugs there and it will be held in this little silver slots in here like so and here and then you can provide that this is not too hot take this out and I have the new sensor here The new sensor comes with a bit of uh, copper grease on the thread. So we can get the new sensor in there. So I mean, usually when I get um, when I get a mixture reading mixture uh, fault code on this. Uh, Mercedes on this uh, model it, it normally refers to the uh, let's just uh, make sure that goes in nicely normally it refers to the um, this a breather pipe the breather pipe that goes uh, very soggy type of uh, thing and then you need to change it and that, that pipe is sitting under the uh, air box oh okay um, now I'm just gonna use that tighten this a little bit and tight in there now we can plug this in one way because it won't let you plug it in the other way just clips in there and in here that's right next to the oil sump plug bolt there okay that's in there now um, also gonna refit the cover that goes down here and then we'll have a look at those uh, readings again okay so got the car down now um, have a look at that those readings again it is a good idea to before changing any parts to check the readings um, even the fault code may be indicating uh, the part is faulty sometimes um, something else triggers the fault and it's not related so we end up changing parts for no reason uh, let's have a look at the values then um, it's the downstream and you can already see the difference here so that sensor just needs to come up to to temperature once it comes up to temperature it will start uh, working so um, at the moment it says heating capacity is reduced so you need it, it those uh, sensors uh, work on heat um, but I can already see um, 
the change here uh, let's have a look at the other one this is the upstream uh, so this is what will happen is the heating capacity will go to control and then we should see some uh, fluctuation We'll give it. Uh, we'll give it five minutes for that sensor to heat up and start. So the heating capacity is now uh, racing. Um, uh, sorry, rising, and it's controlled now. Um, now you can clearly see the difference in the readings there. So that is what um, what I really want that sensor to be doing. It needs to be fluctuating. Um, and you can see now uh, that that is what is happening. So, well, like I said, that particular sensor is quite expensive. So, even if you have the fault code, it doesn't necessarily mean the sensor is faulty. Could be something else, but um, if you can, if you can actually get the readings, then uh, if that isn't fluctuating between zero and one, then um, then it is likely to be the sensor. Um, anyway, I hope this video helps uh, you helps anyone diagnose in their O2 sensor so uh, thank you for watching